I started off as a DJ before I got into producing music. I think that's probably the important the important crossroad for me was moving from DJing to producing music and I was a DJ in the late 80s, early 90s Melbourne and Josh Abrahams who's an artist that I still work with today um, came up and said what's this you're playing and I was like what's well, house music and he said yeah do you want to make this stuff and I was like yeah sure so you know, that probably was towards the later teens for me and that's how I got into um, making music. I was working in a music production house in London called Delicious Digital and um, they made all kinds of music and sound design for um, media companies mainly and one of the composers there, very talented composer Ed Morris was using P33As in the main studio and I had my own studio and I was using some other brand of monitors and I, I just remember always finding that the um, emotion you'd get out of the speakers were, were quite phenomenal. There was something about that top end which was really unique and it was just, it was beautiful to write music on. So um, that was my first introduction and, and I just noticed that at any opportunity I'd want to get into Ed's studio and, and be writing on, on those P33As. I think monitoring is the most, most important thing. I think, um, you know, you, everyone looks at plugins and keyboards and doors, but if you can't hear it you can't make it and you know without sounding obvious music and audio is all about um, what you hear so I, I always I think you know I run the music production school school of synthesis and we teach many things but one of the things that I always say is invest in a good pair of monitors because generally they'll hang around for five or ten years and um, you know invest in something that is is clear and that you love working on so I think I think besides your skill set I think your monitors are the most important thing. I mean, I grew up as an artist who basically released music, and in the past five years, um, a lot of my work has been for film, composition for film and video games, um, and other, you know, more kind of corporate mediums. I'm lucky enough that I always write stuff that I like, but I just haven't really been able to put the music aside to use um, for, to create an album. So I really wanted to focus on putting that creative time aside and, write an album which has come along really well and I'm really happy with and we're just at the stage now where we're kind of discussion, discussing options as to, as to um, what avenues and how that music might be released. I've really gotten to a stage now where we've got They've, they've just found that perfect balance between professional monitoring and emotive listening. It's so detailed and so clear that you can, and just so full that you can just listen to it at, at a really low volume. And I, I find myself with other brands of monitors having to kind of drive for the, for the volume just to be able to feel like you're hearing things clearly. But I don't get that with Adam. I certainly don't get that with the new S series. It's something that you can monitor at very low levels and feel like you're getting the complete picture. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of the virtues of them. Just coincidentally, when I started DJing late 80s, mid to late 80s, it was you know, very much a time of the birth of house music, so it's just something I naturally gravitated to. Um, and that's what I became known for. I had a uh, radio show on Australian radio station 3 R, and it was one of the first to play um, house and techno. So, you know, I was very much the house and acid and techno DJ, and I think it was kind of, I don't know, like probably 93, 94, where, you know, I'd had a good run of it, a good, you know, seven, eight year run. And I felt the scene was going through a bit of a transition phase. And um, it, I, I found myself not really enjoying or liking the records that I was playing. And that was probably through laziness of just going for anything that was very obviously 303 distorted driven. Um, and, you know, Drum and bass or jungle, as it was kind of more commonly referred to, it had gone from hardcore into being uh, much more intelligent music because it, you know, it was referred to as intelligent drum and bass by the kind of mid 90s. And it just had me hooked. And for me, it was exactly like being 15 and discovering a new form of music again. And I just gravitated towards it. And it was very difficult because I was in a transitional stage myself. So you kind of had the, you know, the techno crew of Australia wondering why you'd jump ship and the drum and bass or Jungle Crew wondering why you were trying to get on board their ship. So very difficult for me for an artist, but I've always just done what I like and, you know, and, um, just throw myself into anything that I believe, whether I'm 15 or 45, and anything that I 
that, that feels right. And I think that's always been my attitude and certainly was with, with my transition of drum and bass at that stage.